Tis the season, my friends. Seasons greasons to you and your gay apparel or whatever. I am a Halloween person. Don't tell Jesus. This year I thought that this lovely, sorry, Casper, get out of the wrapping paper. Son, it's not toys for you. This holiday season, I thought it was the time to teach you about some alternative holidays invented by Tumblr. Every year on this earth, I partake of the get stressed and buy my family items holiday. But look at me, look at me. We can have more. The Ides of March, Margaret Thatcher Death Day. There are so many dates that mainstream society is just missing out on. I am going to tell you about all of it imminently. But first, I've got to tell you a little bit about this video sponsor, Audible. Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks, podcasts, and Audible originals across every genre. I personally listen to a lot of science fiction, fantasy, and horror titles. The holidays can be a little weird, a little stressful, but they're also a great opportunity to use your time off work or school to relax with an audiobook. Maybe you even have a long trip to visit family coming up soon. Well, the great thing about Audible is that you can listen anytime, anywhere. They've got you covered for long plane rides, train rides, car rides. I highly recommend She Who Became the Sun and He Who Drowned the World by Shelley Parker Chan. I just finished the second one, Absolutely could not stop listening to it. It's such a cool, immersive world to get lost in. As an Audible member, you'll get access to a growing selection of audiobooks, Audible originals, and podcasts, all included within the membership. And new members, of course, get a free trial. You can start yours over at audible.com slash strangeons or text strangeons to 500-500. And now I return you to your regularly scheduled content. So before I get into the invention of Tumblr holidays, there is a little bit of background here. Tumblr has long been delighted by the idea of like limited edition posts, posts you can only reblog today. Any post with a date in it that you can reblog on that date is pretty much guaranteed to do numbers on Tumblr. Just yesterday, as of filming this, I got to reblog the iconic, please, it's Christmas. It's December 10th, April 29th, 2009. Happy Bruno Mars saw Pete Wentz day. Today, per day, is Labor Day. Very important question. Do you remember? Do, do you remember I faithfully listen to this song exactly once per year on the 21st night of September, so thank you for that, Tumblr. On October 3rd, he asked me what day it was. It's October 3rd. This one is very special because it doesn't come around very often. Thursday the 20th. This year it fell on uh, April 20th, which is also 420, the weed Thursday, so people were pretty excited about that. It's the simple things. It's the simple things over on Tumblr.com. Like, uh, sewing an egg on a shirt day. I attempted to find out the origin of the sewing an egg on a shirt image. I discovered that I can order a cursed image photographic print of it for only 40 Canadian dollars? Wow. I couldn't find out the origin of the image though. It's just one of those, one of those internet images, I guess. For the record, also, this absolutely would not work. I am 95% sure. <laughs> This could not work, and I am not willing to get yoke in my sewing machine to make it 100%. Anyway, so I said, don't think of it as Monday. Think of it as the 8,000th day since 9-11. Oh shit, it's 3-21-23. 3, 3 2 3 palindrome day. Fuck, I missed it. Don't worry, you're still in time. 3-22-23. 3, 3, 3 2, 2, 2 3 palindrome day the second. Remember to reblog this post on palindrome days. November 29th, 1972. Today is Video Games' birthday. Happy birthday, Video Games! Video Games, I love you so much! This is such a long-standing tradition. Going insane over any post with a date in it is, at this point, such a long-standing tradition that it's basically a parody of itself. That is just the kind of laugh I need on a Monday. It's Tuesday, dear. It's Thursday. Happy Monday, it's Tuesday, it's Thursday, Sunday. It's fucking Wednesday. This post is a mess. On October 3rd, he asked me what day it was. Time is an illusion, you fuck. Tomorrow is Halloween. Tomorrow is March 28th. Tomorrow is Halloween. It's Halloween time to get spooky. It's the middle of June. It's Halloween time to get spooky. Who the fuck got this on my dash? It's still June. It's time. It's not time. It's fucking March. I don't want to see this. It's time. 237 more days till Halloween. It's like next month, guys. Another trend I've noticed emerging over the past few years is just celebrating days of the week in a funny way. It doesn't need to be anything special like a palindrome day or a important date mentioned in a popular movie. It can just be Tuesday. Sweet Fat of the Hog Tuesday. Wet Beast Wednesday. Probably the most popular of all Out of Touch Thursday. 
Flat Fuck Friday. Slut Fuck Friday, you fucking losers. Sea Slug Saturday. Tuesday again, no problem. Tuesday again, no problem. I made a post asking people to tell me all of their favorite Tumblr holidays, and someone commented, have sex Saturday? Is that even from a real post? Extremely loud sound Wednesday. Monday is a start. You know, sometimes I think you people just make shit up. I found this list someone compiled of apparently all of the day of the week memes that they've found. And you know what? I want their source list. I want to know if half of these are even real posts. What is happening now? It's time to move on to the calendar. Important occasions that you should put in your Tumblr calendar. We will begin, naturally, at the very beginning of the year with New Year's. Your Tumblr New Year's is not complete without seeing the Meredith Stepien, Stepien, I don't know how to pronounce her name, I'm so sorry. Her New Year's hair thing that she does. Every single year since 2008, she puts her hair into the shape of the year. Delightful. She actually posts these pictures on Instagram, but Tumblr loves it. Every year, Tumblr patiently waits to steal her posts off of Instagram and add them to the Tumblr post compilation. Another popular New Year's tradition is making posts celebrating the wrong year. You can go back and reblog people's authentic, like, Happy New Year's 2012 posts. Or, you know, you can just lie, just make stuff up. Yay, have a great 1972, guys. Happy New Year, Tumblr. Fuck it, bring on 2012. Welcome to 2008. 1996 is here. Well, one of you is lying. I'm using Internet Explorer. I hope this posts quickly. Happy New Year 2011. Another important occasion beyond simply just the dawning of a new year on January 1st is the horse birthday. You know, the horse birthday. All thoroughbreds have the same birthday so that their ages can be standardized for comparison because of the historical lack of records of actual birthdays. All thoroughbred horses celebrate their birthday on the same date, January 1st, in the Northern Hemisphere and August 1st in the Southern Hemisphere. Happy birthday, horses! Northern Hemisphere only. Southern Hemisphere horses do not interact. Ah, shit, they put him in the birthday cake, Plinko! Now, it is very important to verify everything that you read on Tumblr before repeating it. So I have done that. Yes, there is a horse mega birthday. I mean, well, two horse mega birthdays, January 1st and also August 1st. The reason that they are different for the hemispheres is because horse breeding cycles are dependent on the seasons. Most horses are born around each hemisphere's respective spring, so that's why the birthdays are chosen to be when they are. Why standardize the horse age? From what I can tell, horse breeders and racers are kind of insane and it stops them from fighting each other about at what age horses are acceptable to race. Although I'm sure it is a little more complicated than that. Horse people do not come for me. Horse people, please nicely correct me if I'm wrong about horses. March 14th, Pi Day. March 14th, 3.14. Like the number pi. But it's also a pun. It's a day for celebrating both math and pie the pastry. On Pi Day, you will encounter people posting photos of the delicious looking pies that they have made. This one is so incredible. This looks too beautiful to eat. I am obsessed with it. Oh, this person is flexing on me so hard right now. I want all of those pies and that dog. This one is very explicit about its celebration of Pi Day. Also obsessed with it. But do not be lulled into a false sense of security. No, no, no. Pi Day, you see, is merely the cutesy predecessor to one of the most important holidays in the Tumblr canon. Happy Pi Day and tomorrow, Oh, tomorrow. Hanging with my boys in the Senate on Wednesday the 15th. Can't wait to see what they've got planned. I hope it's a surprise party. No one. Tumblr users on March 15th. Get in, loser. We're going to stab Caesar. Girls night. Girls night. Whoops, I accidentally put Caesar in a poll, but don't worry. All he has to do is outrun 23 knives. I don't advocate violence, but every single employee at Twitter has an opportunity to do the funniest thing in history on March 15th. Ides of March pride flag. You're invited to the assassination of Julius Caesar when 15th of March, 44 BC. Interesting how Pi Day comes before Kill Caesar Day, almost as if they use the same knives from cutting pies to stab Caesar. Very interesting observation, men's rights activity, giving me things to think about. I'm pretty sure one of the other posts that goes around every year, I'll see if I can find a screenshot of it, is like, remember to leave out milk and cookies for Brutus tonight. <laughs> April 1st, the Mish Apocalypse. So in 2013, the Supernatural fandom successfully planned and executed this April Fool's joke where a large number of people changed their profile pictures to this picture of Misha Collins, who is one of the actors on Supernatural. They also spam posted various edits of that Misha photo all day. So people logged onto Tumblr that day to find that everyone on their dash had the same profile picture and was posting endless edits of the picture as well. Many of them thought, oh, 
this this seems fun, and then also joined the Misha horde. All day, the Mishas multiplied and increased in power. Part of the success of the Misha apocalypse, I think, was the fact that the Supernatural fandom, the Doctor Who fandom, and the Sherlock fandom were very interconnected at the time. Together they were Super Hulog, and they were one of the biggest fandoms on Tumblr. So something from Supernatural fandom very quickly infected those other two fandoms, very quickly infected a lot of Tumblr because Everyone followed someone who was into Super Who Lock. This past year, 2023, was the 10 year anniversary of the Mish Apocalypse. I actually remember the original Mish Apocalypse. I remember I showed up to school that day and I sat beside my friend in class and she had Photoshop open to like this picture. I remember this, I still remember this picture vividly. It was obviously the Misha Collins face and she was putting it on this picture of like a naked, like a tastefully posed naked man, like you couldn't see anything. And he was like giant in like, surrounded by like city buildings. I don't know what this photo was, but I remember her photoshopping the Misha face onto it in class. And I was like, what the fuck is that? And she was like, oh, it's the Misha apocalypse. We gotta post Misha edits. And I was like, yeah, whatever. Fucking super hulag. Let's see how many Misha Collinses there are today. Like or reblog if this is your icon on this lovely day. Are we human? Or are we Misha? In that moment, I swear, we were Misha. I'm sorry for the Misha apocalypse spam. I lied. April 13th of the Tumblr calendar. Neil banging out the tunes, April 13th, 2006. Today's the day Neil banged out those tunes. I bet those tunes were so sick. I still want to know what sort of planetary alignment had to happen so that Neil banging out the tunes and Neil Cicerego's first YouTube video being uploaded fell on the exact same day and year. Completely unrelated Neils, but apparently people do spam him with the rat photo on this day every year, if only. If only Neil knew what would come. You see, there are two paths that you can take on April 13th. A young man stands in his bedroom. It just so happens that today, the 13th of April, is this young man's birthday. Though it was 13 years ago he was given life, it is only today he will be given a name. That's right, it's the Homestuck Day. Fun fact, the origin of the Neil banging out the tunes image is also unknown. According to Know Your Meme, the first recorded instance of it showing up is on a now deactivated Tumblr blog in only 2014, which is pretty recent. You know, at least compared to the image. Like, what was Neil up to between 2006 and 2014 before he showed up on the internet? April 19th, slash possibly April 7th, the Roman bread day. You know, the Roman graffiti that says on April 19th, I made bread? It is correct that we celebrate the bread anniversary, although someone has helpfully pointed out this is April 19th on the Julian calendar, the real bread day is April 7th. I think it's fine if you celebrate it on April 19th. It says April 19th. Someone actually graffitied this on the train station near where I grew up and I used to see it every time I took the train. I didn't know it was a reference to some ancient Roman graffiti. I would just see it all the time and be like, on April 19th, I made bread. Cool. So I don't know, maybe that's why I'm slightly attached to it being April 19th because I just, I thought it was the graffiti on my local train station for so long. Describe your perfect date. That's a tough one. I'd have to say April 25th because it's not too hot, not too cold. All you need is a light jacket. Happy light jacket day to all those who celebrate. April 28th. Yes, April is a pretty busy month of the Tumblr calendar. You there, boy. What's today? Why, it's Ed Balls Day, sir. You come to me on the day of Ed Balls. Ed Balls? Yeah, it's a name. That's a guy. It's a, that's a real guy's name. He's a British politician. Ed Balls Day originally... It, orig it originally originated? Is that what was about to come out of my mouth? Um, so Ed, <laughs> Ed Balls Day originated on Twitter, but I will let it slide because people do have a lot of fun with it on Tumblr. The story, nay, the legend, goes that Ed Balls was attempting to search his own name on Twitter in 2011, on April 28th, 2011. He attempted to search his own name, but instead tweeted just his name, resulting in this, Ed Balls, he's got a funny name. And people retweeted <laughs> Ed Balls by the thousands immediately. It is now an annual occasion to share this tweet around. Even Ed Balls and the people in his life celebrate it. April 30th. Although it's not really April 30th that's important here. Because when it's April 30th, that means that tomorrow, it's gonna be May. Roses are red, April is gray. But after today, hey, guess what day it is? nearly the end of April, you know what that means. It's gonna be May. What's funny about it's gonna be May is just the continued levels of abstraction that it gets to. We start off with purposely mishearing the lyric, it's gonna be me, to it's gonna be May. Then we get to the level of after today, insert knowing picture of Justin Timberlake. We then progress to the point of the message only being represented by a photo of noodles, which 
kind of resembles his hair in the music video. And then of course, it's gonna be May 1st, International Workers Day. Fast forwarding now a little bit all the way to June 1st. It's June, which means it's illegal to be straight. Anyone caught not being gay will be immediately reported to the FBI. Happy Pride Month 2023. I ain't quitting you. One day I'm gonna tell my grandchildren this was Brokeback Mountain. It's the end of May, y'all know what that means. It's gonna be gay. Yay gay people, we're all gay on Tumblr. But we're also cynical of what a capitalist nightmare Pride is these days. So we support the idea of July, the month following Pride Month, being Gay Wrath Month. Corporations may be taking down all of their Pride decorations and donating to anti-LGBT politicians on July 1st, but we are still here on July 1st and we deserve more than this shiny, sterilized idea that Pride has become. We take a moment to recall Pride's more radical roots on this day. July 11th, we commemorate DashCon. DashCon being the infamous failed Tumblr convention, which had to raise money halfway through and offered disgruntled attendees an extra hour in the ball pit. And there's all these pictures of sad Homestuck cosplayers in this tiny child-sized ball pit in an otherwise empty room. The vibes of it are just completely insane. DashCon, never forget, around July 11th and 12th, so like the original DashCon weekend, people like to circulate posts from around that time, generally the everything is gonna go amazing type announcement posts, which have aged hilariously. Also the someone has urinated in the ball pit post. Attention to all DashCon attendees, someone urinated into the ball pit while it was empty and posted it in the tag, stay out of the ball pit. There are people who think this is a joke. This is not a joke. Please stay out of the ball pit for the safety of your health. I would like to wish you all a happy nine year anniversary to this disaster that went down in infamy. Happy ball pit day, y'all. I've touched on DashCon many times throughout my videos, but I've never done a video fully dedicated to DashCon. And I think the 10 year anniversary is the time. I'm gonna do a big DashCon 10 year anniversary special in July. So put that in your Tumblr calendars. October 30th, that's right. This time it is actually time. It is spooky time. There are of course all of the regular Halloween posts that you'll see going around. The dancing pumpkin guy, those rainbow skeletons. Actually Tumblr seems to, f seems to fixate quite a bit on skeletons around Halloween. I wonder why that is. It is because on this day we must fight with honor in the skeleton war. The skeleton war meme originated with a drill tweet, actually. Everyone on Tumblr apparently saw this and went, well, I guess we better start preparing for the skeleton war. It's time to get spooky, get ready for the skeleton war, enlist early this September and rattle your enemies silly come October. Start your day off right for the skeleton war with a bowl of Branleys. Skeleton war is trending. Prepare your calcium, bring your trumpets, we ride again. Every year some Tumblr users will like organize skeleton wars, which are basically just like campaigns of reblogging a shit ton of skeleton posts that day. I have seen the skeleton war purported to be against wizards, against porn bots, etc. The original Tumblr skeleton war was against fuckboys? <laughs> I don't know, I did not participate um, in the original 2013 skeleton war. I was probably trick-or-treating at the age of 15, but apparently it was against fuckboys. November 5th. How do I begin to explain November 5th? It's sort of like a Misha Apocalypse situation. Just this really weird day that inspired a lot of really weird posts and kept us all like glued to our Tumblr accounts, experiencing this collective insanity. And it happened in 2020, so you know we had a lot of pent-up insanity. November 5th was the Desiel Putin election night. They were still counting votes for the 2020 election at the time. So everyone, especially Americans, were gonna be online with their buttholes clenched waiting for the election results anyway. Cause it really, even in Canada, kind of felt like we were all gonna die if we had to live through another four years of Trump. Huge world event of massive significance was happening. And then the second last episode of Supernatural aired. Supernatural, obviously one of the biggest fandoms of 2010's Tumblr. I talked about it like two minutes ago. They took over the website with that actor's face that one time. Yes, Supernatural fandom. The show was still going in 2020. It had 15 seasons and like 10 of them were unwatchable. They were still making this thing for some reason. Most of the people who were obsessed with it back in the day weren't even keeping up with it anymore. Those of us who never watched it but were tormented with it anyway because it was just ubiquitous on Tumblr had pretty much forgotten that it existed. It was one of those shows, um, very much like Sherlock, where it had a massive female fan base who wanted the male leads to kiss. The most popular ship was Destiel, Dean and Castiel. And in the last episode of Supernatural, they had Castiel confess his love to Dean, only to receive the most insane reaction of all time. Just the most callous, 
homophobic expression you've ever seen a man make. And then he was instantly killed by being dragged into a torture dimension worse than hell. They made him gay and then sent him to evil torture super hell within like 30 seconds. They just speed ran every homophobic trope. Like they almost kind of validated the Tumblr girls and then they just did- Oh my god, the election though. <laughs> Wait. Wait, Vladimir Putin is resigning? Jesus Christ, I am so sick of living through world events. The, the Destiel though? The Destiel on top of it all? Finding out that Vladimir Putin is stepping down in a tweet about Destiel has snapped my brain in half. Pure distilled 2012 Tumblr has been injected directly into my veins. I feel like I'm on crack. And yeah, it was, it was quite a night for Tumblr insanity. And it birthed a meme that I still see on my dash, at least weekly, which is people announcing important world events using this format from the Destiel love confession, you'll see Castiel with tears in his eyes going, I love you, and you know you're about to scroll down and read that some like major person has died. December 17th, commemoration of the nipple ban. The day they banned our nipples. Our, our innocent female presenting nipples tossed aside in favor of advertisers. I had some trouble looking for posts about this one, but generally on this day people will take a moment to, to circulate the original announcement posts about this and to tell staff how much they dislike them. December 22nd, Christmas Adam. Christmas Eve, what about Christmas Adam? Happy Christmas Adam to all men's rights activists. Please stop pestering us with things like this. This has nothing to do with men fighting for their rights. Eve is short for evening. Please don't turn our activism into a joke, thanks. Someone isn't having a good Christmas Adam. Christmas Adam, December 23rd, comes before Christmas Eve and is generally unsatisfying. Happy Christmas Adam, everyone. This is the original post. It has over one million notes. Henceforth, December 22nd was to be known as Christmas Adam. And that brings us right back around to where we are now. Christmas, Christmas Adam is probably coming up soon as of when I'm posting this. I know this video was like kind of a chill, stupid one, but I don't have infinite ideas. Sometimes we just gotta hang out and read Tumblr posts together. It's fine. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had fun. I had fun. I always love reading Tumblr posts. And of course, I will see you in another video very soon, my friends.